Okay, good evening all and welcome to England's post-match press conference with uh, <clears throat> head coach Steve Borthwick and captain Owen Farrell. If we could take the first question, please. We'll start here on the right in the second row, third row, thanks. Hi gents, congratulations on the victory. Uh, Steve, you feel fairly vindicated in certain situations and what's your general response to victory tonight? I'm really pleased for the, the players out there and, and the squad of 33 that have worked really hard uh, for the result tonight. That's the first thing. The second thing, I'm really pleased for all of the supporters, both here in the ground tonight, who I thought were incredible, and the millions back home who have been watching that on television. And I think what's important as well at this point is to, to say um, incredible cr credit to Fiji. What a fantastic team they are. Brilliant World Cup they've had. And the way they play tonight, the team jam-packed full of world-class players with power and pace. And the way they scored those back-to-back -back tries, they scored in a way that I'm not sure too many other teams in the world can score like that. Um, how do you uh, rate Owen's performance? Obviously, he sat right next to you, but um, how, would you, how would you sum it up tonight? Um, I'll, I'll reiterate the words I've said many times about the man sat next to me. I think he is... Um, a fantastic leader. Um, he's the kind of leader I know I'd want to follow onto the pitch. I think he's a brilliant player who thrives in, in the contest and, and especially the, the, these big occasions, he, he just gets even, even better. Um, so we're very fortunate to have Owen as a player in this team and, and as our leader. Um, so I feel very, uh, he should be very proud of his performance and the way he led the team. And Owen, um how pleased are you that you've got, you know, you got through that, you sort of showed the grit to get through it and now you can look forward to a semi-final and as we know at this stage of the competition, the sort of rugby that you can put together will, will obviously make you very competitive for whoever you take on. Yeah, very pleased, very pleased to, to uh, find our way to win the game again um, today. I thought the team's done an excellent job over that, over the, over the group stages and, and, and now in a in a big in a big knockout game, so very pleased. Um, I think the the effort Steve's already touched on it now now, but the effort of the the full the full squad that's gone into into this week has made has made it an, an enjoyable week and made it a week that we've all got we've all got after together, and uh, that will continue now into into next week. Owen, could I just ask you about Ben Al's performance, please? He seems to stand up in really big moments. Um, yeah, I, I mean it's. <laughs> He's, he's obviously he's obviously growing growing and growing as a player, but it's, it's no surprise to me. Um, being his teammate uh, for for a long time now, and seeing how hungry he is, and seeing how much he wants the ball and wants to get involved when when the game matters. Um, I've seen that I've seen that obviously for the club for a, for a while now, and 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 we're we're seeing it here. Um, and it, you know, on, on days like today. It, it probably doesn't feel as right to pick out to pick out individuals as, as much because that's a as I said it's not just a team team performance that's a whole squad a whole squad one but he certainly played a, a big part of it. Thanks. Hi, Steve. Can I ask a couple of questions? First, could you give me an assessment of Marcus Smith's performance at fullback? He seemed to be in the walls a couple of times. I thought he played really well. I thought he defended with um, a huge amount of courage, which is uh, you don't not many people talk about Marcus Smith's defence. And I thought his defence was very, very good tonight. And whoever you face in the, in the semi-final, you're likely to be underdogs. Does that suit you that you've come through this tournament and you said that you've been written off and that you're you're likely to be? Well, I think game? I think many people that, that wrote. That we wouldn't get out of the group. I don't know whether maybe some of them are here tonight. And the team performed very, very well to top the group, and then performed well to find a way to win tonight. What we'll do is we'll recover from today's game, and then we'll build towards our game next Saturday. But you're happy to be underdogs in that semi-final situation. I don't really care what other people think of us. I care about the development of the team. It's just here on the left, and then we'll come back to the right. Yep. Thanks. Thanks for waiting. 
another question for Steve and Owen about the, the semi-final. Uh, would you prefer play against France or South Africa? It's a tough question. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, it's not. It's not a question I can answer very well, to be honest. Uh, I'm, what I can say is I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back to the hotel and watching that game tonight. It should be. It should be a, a fantastic game. And Steve, Steve, about this question? Same answer. <laughs> well, thank you. Hi, Steve. Hi. Steve, over here. Um, can I just ask about uh, the breakdown and how you approached that today? Um, Fiji obviously have had a, a great record so far in the tournament there, and just the work of those three there as well in, in helping swing the, that balance in your favour? Yeah, I thought it was a uh, highly contested area again this evening and I thought both teams got reward as well for their, their defensive efforts at different points within within that game which led to the overall um, management of the performance which I thought the team did did very well to minimise the opportunities that Fiji had to try and get dominance in that area. We see them win big games off the back of, of dominating that area and I thought I thought tonight the, the team wide, you often talk about the back row and they're integral to it but I thought the team wide did a, did a really good job in that area. OK, Will, and then it's two and three. Hi, Steve. Um, you're saying there you don't really care what people think of your team, but do you think after a game of that magnitude and like that, you'll see the support grow behind this side from back home and it when was, it gets to the semi-final? It was when I was asked about whether we're favourites or otherwise. Um, what I sense here is there's a group of supporters that, that are behind this team. I think they've been behind this team from the, the, the start of the tournament. and. I think the crowd tonight were, were, were brilliant, as I said in my opening remark, opening, the answer to the first question. Do you think as a possible sense of a siege mentality around the team, with your comments earlier, do you think that helps the side? Do you think they, they thrive on those moments where you're saying people write them off and they perform on the back of that? I said the team would be ready for September the 9th, and the team's ready for September the 9th, and then the team's built through the tournament. I said that there's a team, there's a squad packed full of of talented players who perform on a big occasion and what they do is perform on a big occasion. And so you feel vindicated for your, your selections and the, the way that you've got through them? I would get to work with a fantastic group of players I'm really privileged to. OK, well, left, Denise. Oh, and, um, sorry, on your left. A question about your, your, the variations in your, in your game plan. You, you, you used a lot of different type of play? Uh, are you pleased by the way you, you play this game? Um, at, times, at times I thought we played, we played some, some really good stuff. Um, there's, there's, things that, there's things that we can do better, as always, and we'll make sure that we, we look at them and work on them going into, going into a big week like next week. Um, but yeah, as, as probably especially pleased with the start of the game is the way that we, at we attacked. Um, attacked the, not just attacked, but attacked the game in general. Um, I thought that, that really showed where, where we was at and um, what our attitude was like today. Um, Owen, so, sorry to say, um, Steve was saying how much you, you thrive in the big contests and it seemed like you had real sort of clarity of thought in those last 13 minutes. It would have been quite easy to panic having conceded 14 points like that. I just wondered, did, it, did a real clarity of, of thought take over in your head at that point? Um, yeah, I, I thought I thought the team the team was brilliant in the, in them moments. Um, as Steve said, there's, there's, I, I don't know if there's another team in the world that can score two tries like like Fiji did today, straight off the back of each other. Um, but we we managed we managed to uh, wrestle our way back into the game, and we got into the right parts of the field, and we managed to take our chances. Um, not just that, we backed it up with a. With a big defensive performance off the back of that, and um, we we did that last week as well. And as Steve said uh, a few times now, this this team this team's finding ways to win. And uh, when it when it's come down to it today, we we, we did that, and I'm very pleased with that. And can, I ask, and then move on. can I ask you about that sort of getting the job done kind of thing, and by hook or by crook, however you win it? Just can you talk about how important that is in World Cups? And we saw Ireland yesterday play an amazing game, but they're on the wrong side of it. Wales the same, but you guys are through. Does, does it almost not matter how you win these games now at World Cups? It's just getting through. You've got to just get through, build on. 
Well, you, you, need, you, want, you want to win the game, obviously, and uh, you want to play the, the opportunities that present themselves. Um, there's, there's many different ways of, of doing that, and obviously there's a, there's a lot of good teams left in, left in this competition, um, and we've got, to, we've got to obviously have a, a massive amount of respect for what other teams can do, because that's what, that's what this stage of the tournament gets like. Um, you saw from Fiji today how, how much power and skill they, they had and, and how they could, they could turn it on in a blink of an eye. And, um, you know, we had, to, we had to manage that and get down the right end of the field ourselves. And I'm just glad that we was able to come away with the result. Oh, and you'll be playing either the world, defending world champions or, or the hosts who are largely fancied to, to lift the trophy. Are there guys in the, in the team who will kind of relish being the underdogs this week? And they'll talk about that and, and, the, and the kind of appetite to cause a huge upset at the World Cup. Um, we'll prepare the we'll prepare we have the way that we have been doing over the past uh, over the past five weeks, six weeks. We've been here. No, no, um, and we'll enjoy we'll enjoy getting to a, a big occasion and a big week, and uh, we'll attack it. And just to kind of rephrase the question, the, the underdog mentality is, is you know you talked about being written off throughout the World Cup. This guy's uh, what um, Coach Steve has. Um, do, will you kind of thrive in that that that, that atmosphere this week? The, the big you know, guys like Ellis Gennard and Courtney Oz, they use that as a fuel to sort of fire the. We'll we'll get about our work. We'll get about our work this week, and we'll prepare like we have been doing um, thoroughly, and, and make sure we're in the right mindset to attack this week. Thanks, Ian. Next one at the yeah. back. Um, <clears throat> hi, Steve. Um, when you named the squad. Um, back in August, I think you were talking about trying to draw on the spirit of the 2007 side, and I'm just wondering, coming through a, a tight game like this in Marseille, as, as the team in 07 did, do you see that evolving? And I suppose, secondly, how much will the team take from having got through that tight final finale um, uh, ahead of the semi-final? Uh, firstly, I'll say that I think the team's found itself in lots of different situations over this last period of time, and it's, we've tried to capture the learning from each one of them. And I thought, I think the players have handled them, each situation in a very smart way. The game one against Argentina, dealing with that sending off after two minutes, and the way the team then responded. Japan game two, playing in a completely different manner, kicked the ball every one and a half rooks on average. No, never seen a Japan team play like that found it in difficult conditions, found a way through that, that contest. I jumped to, to, to game four against Samoa, found ourselves in a difficult situation and played a brilliant Q4 to find a way to win the game. And you see it today, I thought, for large parts, controlled the game and then had a couple of thunderbolts that hit the team in quick succession. And I think you've probably seen in a period of time, not that long ago, the England team probably isn't coming back to win that game. And this team did. So I think there's a, there's a smartness about the team. I think there's a composure about the team led by this man, um, which I think the team is continuing to grow with. And we, we discussed that a lot in the week. We'll talk about scenarios in the week. We'll talk about how you handle different situations. We did a lot of that through our World Cup camps. And I think the players are drawing on all those experiences now. As for comparisons with 07, um, I think this group is incredibly tight. I think this group is very clear on what they're trying to do and what they're trying to work upon each week. And that's why we keep saying it, is we go about our work each week. And that's what I think in 07, after we, were, we had a bit of a reset after game two, I think in 07, the team then concentrated, we'll go about our work each week. And I see, that's what I see with this team. They're doing exactly that. Thanks. Last two questions there, and oh, one more. Um, I guess you watched the two first games um, yesterday evening, the last game for Dan Bigger, the last game for Jonathan Sexton. Uh, in your team, it was the last, uh, it's the last World Cup for a um, lot of colleagues. Did you think to, to, to them during the, the preparation this week? I, I think Courtney Lowe's, Dan Cole, Danny Kerr. Uh, not necessarily in, in the in the preparation for this week, it's, it's been it's been touched upon, but not um, it's been touched upon that we want to make we want to make the most of this competition. We want to bring the best out of ourselves. We want to enjoy getting getting after it. 
and uh, I think not just them boys that you're talking about there, but but the whole the whole squad of 33 have done that really well so far. Uh, just a couple quickly then. I mean, first of all, can you explain what you may have said to the players at that point at 24-24? At and also, there's a fantastic history of key drop goals England in, in World Cups, as, as you will know far more than than I do. At what point did you decide that that was going to be the play, that you were going to try and set it up for the drop goal and the three points? Well, it was, it was 24 all at the time. So, and we was down in there 22. We needed to come away with points. Um, the, forwards, the forwards got us on the front foot. We actually pulled the trigger as backs a bit, a bit too early and got hit behind the game line. And the forwards got us in the right position again. So, uh, fair play to them. Um, they, got us, they got us on the front foot, and enabled, which enabled us to take a shot. And, uh, Danny, Danny was in, Danny was in sync uh, with us at the time. Um, so yeah, just just pleased that we could put that over for the group. Yeah. And, and about re, you know regathering thoughts after a, a scramble, couple of minutes like that. I mean, you that takes a lot, doesn't it, to, to get yourself composed enough to, to go again? Yeah, yeah. But I think I think we're developing a, a, a strong belief here in that in. In what we've already talked about a few times today, of, of, find, of finding a way to win, um, there was no, there was no panic, there was no um, feeling sorry for ourselves under the post. It was just strict. It was just straight on to what's, what's next. And uh, after the first try, it didn't quite work. Um, but after the second one, we we uh, we managed to get all, uh, get ourselves in a position to win it. So um, as I said, it weren't it weren't just that moment, but the however many minutes of defence that led to that led to that victory as well. After that. Thank you very much, Steve Owen. That's all we have time for. The mix zone will be open in just a couple of minutes' time. Thank you.